David Gillick and we are talking to Ireland's best cyclists about wherever they cycle. Today I'm talking to the one and only Eddie Dunbar. Eddie, how are you? Yeah, all good. Um, back in Ireland now for um, a couple of weeks, so I'm just going to get some um, training done now before the next block of racing. So yeah, all good, all good. I was going to ask you what part of the world you were in. I, I kind of thought you might have been somewhere down France or up the Alps, but you're you're back home in Cork, are you? Yeah, well, I got back a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, I just had a couple of weeks where I had no racing, so I, I always like just to pop back home and get a block of training in on familiar roads. Um, I love training back here, down in Cork. So, um, yeah, it's just nice. Just because, uh, yeah, like the last few weeks, I was down south of France, um, which is quite a quite a hilly area, you know. So um, there's not many not many flat or rolly roads, so it's just nice just to change it up a bit and, um, yeah, just get a... Get different kind of training done, you know. Get get distance done rather than hours, you know. So you're back uh, to where it all started. So I suppose first question: Where did you start cycling? Um, literally five kilometers away from my home house in Bantir, so in Kentark. Um, yeah, they've they've always been known for a number of years for having a very good underage setup, you know. Um, so luckily enough, um one of the best youth clubs in Ireland was on my doorstep, you know. Um, and obviously, most people in Ireland know who Danny Curtin is. He runs a very good, um, yeah, probably one of the best underage clubs in the world, you know, for the last, oh, God knows how many years. But um, I was lucky enough to be introduced to him and um, found a love for riding a bike. And uh, he took me under his wing. And yeah, I... Never look back, really. That was 2007. So, um, yeah, no- November 2007, I started. So, that's what, 15 years ago this year, which is a, yeah, it's a, it's a long time when you think about it. But, yeah, as I said, um, just grew to love it. Um, used to race every Sunday. Um, and, yeah, as I said, just, just got the bug for it, you know. Like, you travel an awful lot um, from races to tours to your own kind of training base. But, like, where now, and I know you're at home, but like if we think kind of generally, where do you cycle most now? Um, I probably train the most um, down south of France, Nice, Monaco. Um, there's quite a few guys based down there now. Um, and EOS actually have their offices there now. They have like a team base there. Um, and we have like eight or nine guys down there. So like the support crew down there um, is very good. We're probably spoiled in a way. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's. I think that's why it's one of one of the best teams in the world, you know, because they've done that for so many years with the riders that are down there. And uh, yeah, that's that's probably where I spend most of my time now. But as I said, when whenever I get a chance and or an opportunity, I'll always come back home and just get a, a training block in because um, yeah, it, it it just works for me training here, you know, just getting them blocks in and um, just change changing it up a bit. And down in East, um, like I know there's a lot of pros down there, a lot of teams are based in that area. Like, are you are you guys out riding around doing your training, and then there goes another group or another team, or would you ever kind of cross paths or cross roads with any any of the other big teams? Um, I think we're the only team that's based down there, you could say. Um, but you see, oh yeah, you see guys the whole time, you know. Um, there's probably uh, you're probably talking 40 or 50 guys kind of based around that area, you know. Um, so, like, every day you go out, you're going to see someone um, cycling around with, her, I don't know, whether it's Roglic, Pogacar, um, <laughs> G or Gerd Thomas or any, and all the big names, they're all um, they're all down there. And, um, yeah, it's nice too because it's just like there, there's plenty of guys to go down training with. Obviously, Sam, Sam Bennett's down there as well, so I go out with him whenever I can. Um and yeah, you've Nico was there last year as well, so it was nice. So it's it's nice. There's a good group, and uh, it's uh, uh it's it's just nice as in like to have have guys that are friends on other teams as well. You know, when you go like that, you're not always like being competitive in a race, and you can just chill out and um because everyone's different. Um, yeah, you know, like in competition, everyone's different to when they are outside of it. You know, so it's nice just to get to know fellas that way too. Like on your off season, like. Do you do any other disciplines to cycle across the mountain bike, the gravel? Like, there's so in cycling, there's so many variations. Like, are you always cycling on the road or do you try any of the different stuff? Um, I actually, after well, 
I don't know, about a year and a half ago, I, I actually bought a mountain bike, but um, yeah, like I, I've only been on it two or three times, I think. Um, because we like we have um, Mount Hillary up behind us there in Bantir, so um, it's getting quite popular actually for people going up there on the mountain bike or whatever. But there's not too many trails, there are a few. Um, so I tried out a few of them with a couple of my friends, but um, yeah, I, I actually I haven't, I probably should do more of it. Um, like Sam is always telling me I need to get a gravel bike. Um, he like he always goes like when he's back home, he always does a good bit of mountain biking or he goes on the gravel bike just to change it up a bit. Um, and yeah, like he's always telling me I should do the same because it's good for the head. It's good for the bike handling and stuff. And yeah, I, I just I never get around to it. But no, in the off season, I do a lot of running. Um, I, I like running. I always have done. So um, that's kind of. I just kind of go away from the cycling side of things and just um, switch it up a bit, you know. Like you, you spend like so much time, kind of, you know, you're at home abroad. You know, your bucket list now for a, a cycling destination, like wh- where would that be? Um, one place I I always kind of want to go back to um, is we used to have our training camp there when I was with Action Haggins Bourbon, Axel Merck's team. Um, it was in Calabasas in California, which strangely you think, oh no, it'd be too busy to train there. Um, but it's one of the quietest and I'd say one of the best places to train in the world that I've been to anyway. Um, again, you have a mix of like rolly roads, flat roads, or really like mountainous roads. Uh, I think it's like the Agora Hills. Um, that's what they say around that area, but like the like your options every day for training and everything is um, incredible. Um, And obviously it's a cool place as well. Calabasas, LA, you're kind of like Malibu, all that kind of area. Um, But it's it's strange because you go there and you think, oh, this is going to be a disaster because it's going to be so busy. But you actually have the PCH on one side, then you have the mountains where you can train. And on the other side, there's another massive highway. And um, yeah, so basically all the cars are on there. So um, yeah, if, if anyone ever gets a chance, that's that's where I'd go to. Um, that's where I recommend, sorry, to go training for sure. It's class. Weather's always good too, which helps. Um, but you've guys like, I think Chris Froome goes there still quite a bit um, in January. Um, Garen Thomas goes there every year for a month. Um, Cam Worf um, on our team, he's the Ironman um, world record holder. He goes there all the time. He loves it over there. Um, and I was actually due to go there this year with them but um, just with the way the COVID change and the new variant came in it kind of messed up travel plans but um, yeah it's definitely somewhere I'll, I'll go back to and I'd recommend anyone to go there if they get a chance right, I'll put that on my list what about, yeah, what about it. closer to home are you obviously going to say the roads that are literally on your doorstep down there in Cork and Canturk and Banter and stuff like that but anywhere else around the country that you've kind of gone mm, yeah this place is nice I like this um Again, I actually remember a couple of years ago, I went down to Sam for a weekend and we went training. Um, and I, I've done a few races down in Carrick, but um, yeah, when you when you go down there and train and you have a few more few more hours to do and a few more days to kind of explore the, the training roads down there, were, um, yeah, they were very good. Um, I was fairly impressed. Um, like even the, the choice of climbs down there, um, I, I didn't think it was like that. I, I just, I'd be biased. I'd always thought, um, band here in Kentork was the best place to train but uh, that that was very I was impressed with that and uh, like you can see why there's so many so many good riders come out of there that's for sure this is probably more personal questions but as you can see I have the bike behind me and I'm trying to get into the cycling so for a beginner like me and I'm sure there'll be beginners watching this any tips from the pro uh, to help us along our way I think one thing I've been saying to um, a few people now is I think the like you said like the cyclocross, the gravel biking, the mountain biking, I think it's really important um, for people to kind of um, get into that now, because the main thing I find now with um, being in a race or in a racing atmosphere, no matter what it is, it's just like bike handling is very important, you know, like to be able to react, to be able to ride in a bunch, just to be able to hold your bike straight even, you know, Um, and just kind of, kind of know what's happening but I think um, in that sense I, I'd encourage anyone just to kind of get into that side of it because that's that's like it's, it's easy to go out on a road bike and cycle on the main road there and cycle in the straight line and um, like yeah just go on roads that you know and it's very easy to 
to know where you are, you're comfortable on it. But it's um yeah, anyone starting out, I think it'd be it's it's just good go go for the cyclocross bike, go for the mountain bike maybe and um just kind of get a feeling for it. And then once you go on a road bike, you'll feel ten times easier, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I'm trying to do a bit of that. Throw in a bit of uh, e-cycling there as well to try and get the fitness up. And who knows? Who knows? Yeah, that'll bring on the fitness. Yeah, <laughs> the turbo. The turbo. Yeah. Um, well, Eddie, look, you know, you've given us so much of your time. Really appreciate that. Uh, and also thanks to everyone who has joined the cycle with Cycle Ireland here in, in 2022. So, Eddie, we're all rooting for you. We all, we all wish you the best in the coming weeks and coming months ahead. And, um, yeah, stay safe and look after yourself. Perfect. Thanks a lot, David. Cheers.